So during the intermission, we learned Marie Lord can play a pretty mean Zerg player in a 4v4 scenario. <laughs> but uh, welcome back. It was a bit of downtime. We tried to fill it with some fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that game. But we are in the semifinals, finally, for actually and for realsies. Spawning here. Oh, you know what? It's not best of three. It's actually a best of five. There we go. Spawning here in the bottom right corner of the map, we have our red Terran player from Millennium. It's Marine Lord. Never right as the blue Protoss Millennium's Lil Bow. Yeah, sadly, we do get a bit of a team kill here. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, Lil Bow is just about the best damn Protoss we've seen in recent days. He took out Major recently. He plays very well TVP. Marine Lord is his teammate. They also, I think, streamed together a little bit from the team house. I don't know how well <laughs> versed they're going to be for one another, but I gotta wish Marine Lord the best of luck, because I give this one to Little Bow every single time. Apparently, Marine Lord made a miss a chrono. And oh, are you... To quit. Are you translating? A little. It doesn't take, si it doesn't take much. It's not exactly complicated French. Je ne parle pas français. Mm, no. And that's pretty much the extent of it right there. But you're Canadian. Aren't they like all French up there? <laughs> Fun fact. Despite the fact that I I failed French two years in a row before dropping it in grade 12, I actually managed to get uh, honor roll still, even with that working against me. Because <laughs> uh, I guess if you get like 100% in science, it balances out the less than 50% you got in French. <laughs> Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my teacher just gave me a break. I've been the same teacher for three years, and I definitely didn't study for my final oral exam. And uh, I, I was like really close to like breaking on and crying on the tape recorder, but I didn't. But it was still terrible. But I still passed. So she was just a nice lady. So I frustrate. I get I get very frustrated easily with French. And what was irritating was I constantly got remedial reminders like coming after class, coming after school. I'm here for half an hour every day, you know, you get some help. And my fucking fat bitch of a French teacher would never be there. She 100% of the time I went was never there after school. It was so frustrating, so irritating, <laughs> so yeah. Oh. Because then like you get your your uh, your next report card and it's like. You know, you should try coming for some of the after school classes. I'm like, where are these classes? I've been trying for three months. <laughs> like, wow. Sorry. I, I had a good French teacher, so I had a, I'm uh, sorry. My first French teacher was amazing. He came into the class. I remember it was like grade eight. His name was Mr. Le Jean T. He was really awesome. And he just comes in speaking French. Doesn't say a lick of English and looks at us like, what? You guys don't understand what I'm saying? Like totally just trolls the class. I, uh... My teacher, we had like the, my teacher was like the English French teacher. She was English, but she backpacked through Europe when she was in her 20s. Nice. She was really cool. But then the other French teacher was a French lady who no one really liked because she was very like stereotypically French. And she'd always smoke. And you know they call their smoke something different, right? Their cigarettes, something different. It's kind of a bad word in American language. I don't want to say it because Switch has going to go insane. Oh, but, you mean smoking a fag. Yeah. Madame okay. Shard would always make fun of uh, Madame... I forget the other person's name <laughs> about having to go out and smoke one. Yeah, Arrested uh, Development made some really good jokes around that, actually. They always censored it out no matter how it was being used in what context. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess getting back, of course, to the game, sorry guys, we just had pretty standard openings out of both players, and that was really getting too exciting. Um, Marine Lord, of course, quickly fills up with his three racks to make sure that this earlier commander doesn't hurt him. Uh, he's mm. really going to be prepared for Oracles. The earlier tech lab may be an indication he might want to go for a push if he puts concussive shells on first, but. Most likely it'll be stim. Most likely you try and bait out the overcharge. Or oh, it's actually combat shields. Um, but the, the the point is like I just can't really see these two playing up normally against each other. None of neither of them really strike me as that cheesy. Like I don't really imagine Little Bow being behind in the series and coming back with a, a, a proxy gateway or anything like that. No, but certainly all ins are well within his ability. In fact, Catalina we saw a very cool two base Colossus all in where you just abuse the fact that you also have blink, as you usually do, and well, you walk up the cliff on Catalina, and you have their entire army in their main base, and they don't know. So that was pretty sick. I don't know if it's the same thing. He is opening up with Blink, but that's just a very standard opener. Now, if you open the Colossus, it still wouldn't necessarily mean that he's going to do that all in. Just about when he puts all those gateways down that we'll know. Well, the combat shield should be... Okay, there he goes. Marine Lord pushes out. Should have meant that he was going to push out, and he does. Two Marauders at the front will soak up a lot of that photon overcharge damage. 
Oh, the comedy show is just really... It's like combination cool, but combination... Like, I don't know how much I'll get away with this. I, I mean, they can take the extra stalker shots. It'll take that much more to kill the Marines, which is really intriguing for me, I guess. But is that enough to kill all the stalkers with a photon overcharge barreling down on you? I mean, keep in mind, stalkers deal exactly the same amount of damage to a Marine that the combat shield provides, but it's exactly one more shot that it'll take to kill them. But, uh... Hmm. Some the overcharge. Interesting. If the Immortal pops out, it'll certainly help for this attack, but it, it seems like it's gonna pop out and be like, what happened? Did I miss anything? Okay, get the Mothership Core. Nice snipe on the Mothership Core. Nice. Uh, if this was a fight without Marauders, that was actually a fantastic, amazing engagement, but because there were Marauders and he loses them, I just, I feel this was an okay trade at best for Marine Lord. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, the Immortal popping out is really gonna be, okay, he cancels it, so it was just to hold on with that fight, which is kind of funny. Didn't pop out until after the fight was done. There goes Robotics Bay. How many probes did he lose? Ten probes plus the mothership. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, he might have to deal with one drop that might, you know, be hard without Photon Overcharge. But he should have one Photon Overcharge. It's going to be any double drops that he would have to be worried about. Ah, uh, but he's not people on the SEs. Spunker's probably going to die. Yeah, it's not. That oh, maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, in fact, yeah. I would say it's not worth pulling the SUVs and starting the SUVs. Yeah, realizing the two marine light immediately retreats them, but uh, yeah, we saw a parting pull off some magic with blink stalkers recently. Sadly, a little bit. Uh, he, just, he doesn't have that magic. <laughs> it's not Peter well, Pan. Well, he's not. Yeah, he's not dedicating nearly as much to it either. Uh, you know, only two, two and a half warpins or something like that. Because he is going straight up to the Colossus, and I do wonder if he's going to do the all in. Uh, he's being very annoying. Well, you're right, not ending the game like parting. Seems to do. I mean, that's on two gateways. I feel one of the things for a little bit lacking in this, though, is there are no upgrades, right? This is well, going to be that two base Colossus all in, and it either works really, really well, or Marine Lord should be able to push this back in the I think, well, he's going to abuse it, right? And I think if it's abused, then I don't really know how people will defend against that. Uh, if he is going to, you guys will see just how gross it looks when you blink up with your Colossus just walking up. It's quite, quite bad. Well, we'll see what it comes down to. I mean, Marine Lord, he's still getting these extra bunk uh, barracks down. He doesn't have Viking production just yet. He's not going to have the easy anti-Colossus army, but if you've got enough Marines and enough Marauders, and it's mostly Stalkers with this and not Zealots, I, I just feel like you can stim into there and uh, pick off the Colossus fairly easily. Oh, that's a very fast reaction. Yeah. Uh, did he neglect? He did neglect concussor shells. That's gonna suck a little bit. Yeah. Well, one drop, as I said before, is not that big of a deal. In fact, the militia core, as long as it's been, probably has two. Oh well, she's coming with the army, so never mind. It's gonna be a time warp for the aggression. And now, catching him in this position might be really good for Marine Lord, because Marine Lord might predict he's gonna go into the main. Or Lobo might just not now and just go ahead and go for the front because he knows that no Vikings are out. Yeah, the bunker was torn down already Never too. Mind. Uh, if He's anything, this is this is a more dedicated attack at a little bow, but yeah, it's it's just mostly stalkers, right? So it's there's not really that same buffer. He pulls the SCVs. Maybe this will work. Maybe it doesn't. But if he can't get rid of those Colossus, then the stalkers don't matter. So yeah. uh, he continues to chase them down. They blink away, and this one mines. Oh, I should get a pretty nice burrow up. Oh, never mind. Just kidding. And so if the army's already in position in the top, then that's you know that's no big deal. It's like fighting at face value. But what we've seen before is that the army will be like over here or even in the the low ground and the natural, and it'll just get completely demolished going up that choke. The same thing can still happen if it has to go down in the natural though. But Lil Bao has already missed that opportunity. The army is down here, going to get a somewhat of a concave. Vikings are also out. Oh, missile turret hype. <laughs> Gets the shots off on the Colossus. Uh, definitely what he needs to have happen. But this is this is the problem without zealots and without force fields, which he's now warping in. Oh, this is so good he's doing this. Without zealots and without force fields, it was going to be really hard to actually beat back this army. As we saw, the stalkers just they don't buffer the same way the zealots do. The same way force fields can push an army back. And two Vikings, four Vikings, three Vikings, whatever Vikings he has, it's going to take so long to actually chip at those Colossus health. It's so many Marauders, though. He just yeah. has such a, a sturdy army. Oh, gets the sentries. Gets the sentries. No force fields to keep us back. Dedicated so much with that attack in the main that he is going to uh -huh. lose this game. Yeah, the, uh, the once he broke those Colossus, this changed around dynamically. Marauders are just so good versus Stalkers. There's a small amount of population like Party who can make this look otherwise, but uh, GG is called, and Marine Lord will take game number one in this best of five.